Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, my senior project is titled The Plants of Little Duck Island, Maine. And so let me just tell you a little bit of background about myself and about this project. Uh, basically, I love plants. And this all began with my interest in wilderness survival skills and how plants can be used for edible and medicinal purposes. Um, and then that sort of led into my interest of, you know, so where can you find these different edible and medicinal plants? And why do they grow where they do? And what factors influence that? So uh, then I came to COA, and I took trees and shrubs of Mount Desert Island with Nishi Raja Karuna, my advisor for this project. Uh, and I was hooked. I knew that plants is something that I really wanted to foc focus on at COA. Uh, so I was pretty excited about that. Uh, and overall, COA has been a great support for my interest and passion in plants. And whenever I've wanted to do something, I've been able to do it. And so it's been an overall great experience. So <clears throat> Little Duck Island is just south of Mount Desert Island. And the island's about 80 acres in size. And I heard it's uninhabited and um, relatively unexplored. I heard about it from one of my professors, John Anderson, who suggested, oh, wouldn't it be cool to do a really good survey of the different plant communities on the island? I thought, wow, you know, this is such a great opportunity for me to really apply my interests in plants as a sort of culminating experience to my uh, COA, time at COA. Uh, so the island's owned by National Audubon Society, and it's under an easement for Acadia National Park. So on the island, uh, this was last summer, I spent on the island with another student, Matthew Dickinson, who was my field assistant on the island. And I'm forever indebted to his help on the island. He was an excellent field assistant and helped me out a lot. Um, so I wanna thank him for that. Um, and so we were on the island for about five weeks throughout the summer. Um, it was kind of spread out to sort of get all the f different flowering times for all the different plants. And there were three facets to the study. The first one was a plant collection. We collected, um, basically at least one representative uh, pressed plant of every species on the island to have a collection that we could use for re future reference. Uh, the other aspect of it was plots. We set up different plots throughout the island to measure the abundance of all the different plant species on the island, and as well as collecting soil samples, um, which I'll talk about later. And then finally, we uh, kept natural history journals of all our observations throughout the summer, which included a checklist of the various birds we saw on the island. So here's some examples uh, of the plants we saw. On the left is a common buttercup. On the right is a polypody fern. Star flower. A rose twisted stalk. And if you go back to uh, here, that, that, this is a photograph on Little Duck Island. You can see the diversity of flowers. So overall, we found 145 different species of plants in 46 different plant families. And uh, so I used the, the abundance data along with aerial photographs and our ground observations to generate several maps. And this is one of the basic vegetation types on the island. The, the dark blue area in the middle here is mostly coniferous forest. And then it sort of spreads out towards the edge of the forested area where it becomes more mixed and you have deciduous and coniferous trees. And then eventually on the outside of the island, mostly on the west side, you have mostly field. So then all the soil samples were tested for different soil nutrients um, concentrations. And so this is an example of calcium on the island. And I used the data uh, in GIS to generate these maps. Uh, and so the lighter areas are lower concentrations of calcium and the darker areas are high, higher concentrations. And it's kind of cool, you can see a correlation between where the calcium is very low and where the forest is on the island. Uh, and there were many of these correlations throughout a lot of the different soil nutrients we found. Um, and this is one of the, uh, from, from what I've heard in talking to, to regional botanists, this seems like it's one of the only um, regional uh, surveys that's incorporated soil data to such an extent on islands, and so that's kind of exciting. Um, so some other findings that were interesting, uh, there are several new island plants, so there were a few species that were not previously seen on other islands in the area, which is kind of interesting, and there's also five species that we found that are not previously recorded for the Acadia National Park region, which is also very exciting. And then finally, um, Acadia National Park, about 25% of the plants are non-natives, whereas on this island, only 18% were not native, um, which may be the result of a reduced human influence, but I'll, I'll talk about that more in a second. 
Um, another interesting thing is there were no mammals on the island, so there was a lack of herbivory. And I've never before going to this island seen a place where there's no deer browsing, no rabbit browsing, nothing like that. So the plants really own the island, which is very interesting to see. Um, and so there's a reduced human impact. The island was bought in 1908 to be preserved as a bird sanctuary. And since then, there's really been very little human influence on the island, direct human influence at least. So in the future, I really want to continue working with plants as much as I can. Uh, this summer, I'm going to California to do some plant surveys in the Sierra Nevada mountains for the US Forest Service, which I'm pretty excited about. And then I hope to come back this uh, next winter and spring to keep working on this project. I hope to apply for a grant or something to help support that. Um, there's still a lot to be done with it, a lot of data that I still have to analyze and a lot of data that can still be written up and um, looked at and potentially future studies that could be done using this data. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. But I really couldn't have done any of this without COA. Uh, COA, all the faculty, staff, students, um, just so much support, uh, especially from uh, my advisor for this and my advisor for part of my academic advisor for part of my time at COA, Nishi Raja Karuna, um, a regional botanist, Glenn Middlehauser, John Anderson, another professor here, Chris Peterson, my uh, faculty advisor at COA, um, and many other um, people that have helped me. And so overall, COA has really supported this. Uh, so thank you. Thank you.